Hi, everybody. My name is Fatin Healy, a senior solution engineer at GitHub. I've been with GitHub for over four years. Time flies when you are having fun and enjoying work. I'm based in Sydney, Australia. As a solution engineer, I get the privilege to work very closely with our APAC customers from all different sizes and introduce them to all the new and cool stuff that GitHub ship. Today, I'm excited and very pleased to be talking to you about GitHub Actions, one of the amazing products that helps deliver software faster. We will be introducing GitHub Actions, highlighting some of the latest features that we shipped, as well as what we have on the roadmap. We will be having some quick and short demos in between and some closing notes at the end. So let's get started. What is GitHub Actions? GitHub Actions is a continuous integration and continuous delivery CI CD platform that allows you to automate your build, test, and deployment pipelines. We want to provide you with powerful CI CD experience right alongside your code and setup. Why do our customers care? Because it helps them speed up their development. It allows them to spend less time doing the things that they do not want to do and more time doing the things they do love to do like innovating and writing their code. I know that when we talk about GitHub Actions, people think about CI CD straight away, and that's correct. But it's actually even more than that, as it helps automate anything to do with your project, repositories, organization, and anything. I wanted to mention one non-CI CD example here, which is the issue label notification action. For people who are not very familiar with labels, Labels in GitHub help people quickly understand the context of an issue or pull request. So the issue label notifier action can be configured to notify individuals and or teams when a specific label is added to an issue or a pull request. So this will effectively let teams and individuals subscribe to topics, diff conversations as defined by the label in use. I'll give you an example. Internally at GitHub, we have a repo where we collect all the different feedback and feature requests from our customers. And as solution engineers, we get lots of these different feedback and feature requests that help us improve our product. So we create different issues in that repository and we add a label to that, these issues. This will automatically tag the appropriate product manager so he or she will get notified. Now we spoke about GitHub as CI tool as well as non-CI tool. As GitHub, you know, is the home of open source following the same concept as open source, you can leverage GitHub Marketplace. GitHub, GitHub Marketplace will give you and your organization access to tens of thousands of pre-built actions from trusted verified partners like Azure, plus hundreds more from the open source community as well, making it super easy to build your CI CD workflow that's right for your team without having to start everything from scratch. As we mentioned, Actions goes beyond CI CD, and if you check the marketplace, you'll be able to find lots of different actions who will be able to streamline any process within your developer workflow. And this will free up the developers so they can focus on delivering value, not just performing manual tasks. So we just had a quick overview of GitHub Actions. Now let's go and check GitHub Action end of workflow sentence. Now that we had a quick introduction to GitHub Actions, I would like to show you the workflow syntax behind GitHub Actions. Here is my repo. And at the top, under the Actions tab, I can go and start creating a new workflow. And as you can see, I've got a few suggestions to start with. I'll choose .NET as this is a .NET application and then from here you can see that this is my workflow it's a yaml file and the workflow is sitting under a specific folder dot github slash workflows and this is a configurable automated process that will run as you can see here one or more different jobs these are the different uh, jobs that we've got and each job is a set of steps in a workflow that execute on the same uh, runner for this one, I've got the Ubuntu latest as my runner. When it comes to the uh, runners, you can choose between self-hosted runners or GitHub-hosted runners. GitHub will provide you with Linux, Windows, and Mac OS virtual machines to run your workflows, 
or you can host your own self-hosted runners in your own data centers or cloud infrastructure such as Azure. In this example, as you can see, I chose the Ubuntu latest one because it's the cheapest and fastest job runner available for me. And now at the top, you'll see all the different events that will trigger my workflow to run. So an event can be any activity originated from GitHub. For example, when someone creates a pull request here on the main branch of God, or when someone push a comment, or there's open an issue, there's a long list of different events that can trigger workflows. In addition, you can also trigger a workflow to run on a scheduled base, or you can also run it manually. I can choose from the marketplace all the different uh, GitHub actions available for me. So if I search for Azure, you can see all the different uh, GitHub actions that are available uh, for me from the marketplace. So I just wanted to give you that quick uh, tour of the uh, GitHub actions workflow. And now let's go back. The next is highlighting and talking about some of the recently shipped uh, features for GitHub actions. Let's start. The first one, we, as you can see, we are very focused on enterprise enablement, making sure that we are enabling scenarios and features that large teams need to scale, not just the size of their team, but even for large projects. Over the far last few months, the team has been working on many features, such as the reusable workflows and actions. So this will give the ability to not have to reauthor your workflows over and over again. The second one is using actions from internal repos. And this is, was a very popular one requested by a lot of my customers as they do not want to use actions uh, from public repos. Now, for GitHub Enterprise Server customers, we had the self-hosted runners giving them access to limit uh, uh, the use to meet some security requirements and performance and concurrency. We've been working to increase these limits, each version, and investing heavily in this area. So version by version, we're increasing that power by hundreds and thousands. So we've been investing an incredible amount into concurrency and scalability for GitHub Enterprise Server customers when it comes to actions. Now, when it comes to the developers who are working on building and managing these uh, uh, actions as well, we've been working on a better experience for them. So for the ones who are interacting with actions. So they've got the ability, for example, to rerun a workflow and see the previous attempts. They can uh, rerun just the failed portions, for example, of, your, of the workflow. Uh, they get better workflow suggestions, as we just saw in the previous demo, when developers are actually authoring their actions workflows. They can rerun with the new debugging capabilities that will help them invest and troubleshoot. And the last item when it comes to the job summary, this is important because it gives the developers the ability to customize the report that they would like to see when it comes to this job summary view. So all of these really powerful experience improvement help not just when it comes to scale, but also for the administration side of actions. Now, we know that organizations are always looking for CICD to increase their developer velocity, and they want to decrease the total effort and time spent on development activities as well. However, to get that full benefit of their CI-CD workflow, teams are required to invest in both technical infrastructure as well as the additional people required to manage it. For the users of self-hosted uh, runners, it's not uncommon to have like 40 to 50% of their time spent just keeping their build infrastructure up and running. So it's a hugely inefficient use of engineering resource that we can be using for development instead. So the big news is, is for GitHub hosted runner site is that our public beta for larger GitHub hosted runners is here. It landed on the 1st of September. So this is extremely exciting because it's the vein of our mission with actions, which is to help our developer move faster. So this will help them build faster, as well as it will help our large customers connect our hosted runners to their own network. So there's a security from a security perspective. So one uh, first one is uh, that's new large runners for both Linux as well as Windows offering. Instead of just having two core CPU, which is our GitHub hosted the standard one that everyone's used to now, 
customers can now select all the way up to 64 core CPU. Core machines, memory, and disk size sorts, you know, goes with that directly as well. When it comes to pricing, this is a pay-as-you-go model, so it's not included in the 15,000 minutes that the enterprise customers get for free. Uh, the next big one is when we talk about GitHub, uh, larger GitHub uh, runners, is the fixed IP range. So this is very important for enterprises, as they want to, uh, who are like, connecting their runners to their network, for example. So they will be able to get their own reserved static IP addresses, which is a very small one that they can allow through their network. So this is really exciting and it will unlock lots of customers to start using GitHub hosted runners. Enterprise customers will be able to configure these large runners so they can receive, uh, receive a static IP address from the IP, uh, GitHub IP address pool. Okay, now, uh, as you can see with our new larger GitHub hosted runners, customers can spend less time managing the infrastructure and more time writing the code. GitHub hosted runners will give your team access to these bigger runner size, fixed IP ranges, and increased concurrency for their workflows. When teams use fast, scalable, secure compute resources, fully managed by GitHub, they can spend more time now developing new features and uh, less time managing the infrastructure. So these new larger runners are very powerful, very secure, and entirely managed by GitHub. So we can let your team stop uh, focusing on infrastructure and start focusing on what they really enjoy, which is writing code. OK. And the next one, I know that we spoke about GitHub larger runners. We spoke about the GitHub hosted runners and all the improvement that we're bringing here. But we have some customers who cannot use uh, GitHub hosted runners for some reasons. Uh, these are like enterprise cloud customers, as well as we've got our GitHub enterprise server customers who cannot access the GitHub hosted runners as of today. So we, uh, they're not, we didn't leave them behind. So we understand that there's a large appetite for these self-hosted runners for these customers. So we shipped ephemeral runners recently, as well as after that, we shipped a series of new webhook to make auto scaling easier for our customers who are trying to do it on their own. They were trying to use like lots of different open source projects, but now we've got to ship that series of new webhooks to make auto scaling uh, easier for them. Uh, we also shipped a new command hooks that supported and that is supported now in our runner. So our customers were having trouble running our runner inside containers specifically if they were trying uh, to run and create containers. So we shipped a new feature where they can now replace the uh, things like Docker run or Docker create, so they can replace these with their own uh, script. Okay, so uh, lots of exciting things. All of this as well is leading up to the next big milestone on our roadmap for the self-hosted runners, which is a fully supported auto-scaling controller. I just wanted to share here a quick uh, screenshot just to show how, you know, like with the uh, uh, auto, uh, auto scaling uh, for self hosted runners, it will automatically scale in this case down runners after n minutes. So it's automatically scaling up and down. Now that we mentioned all of these different uh, features that we recently shipped, I would like to mention two more uh, features. One of them is being able to deploy. Uh, to GitHub pages from GitHub Actions and uh, talk a little bit about protected environments. I would like to show you here that you can use any static site generator to deploy your app to GitHub pages with the help of GitHub Actions. So this is my uh, repo. And if I go under the settings tab and then to the pages, usually all the time I was able to deploy from a specific branch but now I have the option to deploy from GitHub Actions. So as you can see, because this is a next.js application, I've got the suggestions to use the next.js uh, action. And then I just want to commit it straight to main because this is a demo, but in real life, this is totally not recommended and you always need to come, uh, create a branch and then uh, from the branch to your uh, create a pull request into your main one. But well, for demo purposes, I'm doing it straight here. And as you can see now, it created my pages.yaml. And now it's building it. And then we're going to be able to uh, see it uh, deploy. So 
Now that this is all uh, committed, once it's completed, you'll be able to see a GitHub page uh, deployed using uh, GitHub Actions. It's going to take a couple of seconds uh, to complete. Now that the build is complete, it's going to go ahead and deploy it to GitHub Pages. So it's very quick, very easy for me to deploy into GitHub Pages from GitHub Actions. So this is this feature is in beta at the moment. It's in public beta at the moment. And here we go. I've got my site up and running. And this has been deployed using uh, GitHub Actions. Okay, for the second part, I would like to, to show you a little bit about protected environment. So this is a .NET uh, web uh, up, uh, repo. It's public as well. And I've got my branch and my pull request ready, so we don't have to wait for it during uh, the demo. But the, all what this is doing is changing the background color from purple to red, as you can see, just the CSS file. And now that the pull request is uh, created, it's go and running all the checks. If I go to the Actions tab, I'll be able to see my workflow running. So it's still uh, running at the moment. It's going and build it. To talk a little bit about the environment protection rules, it will require specific conditions so you can pass before uh, that to pass before the job uh, reference is will proceed to the environment. And there's lots of different uh, type of uh, protection rules for the environment. For example, requiring a manual approval or waiting uh, some time, which means of delaying the job or restricting the environment to uh, certain branches only. So for this one, I will be showing the one that will require reviewers uh, before going into uh, production. So at the moment now, it's still, and you can see all the different uh, build, it's still uh, running. Once this is completed, we'll be able to see that it will get to my uh, staging environment. And then we will have, a, uh, it will require a reviewer before getting into uh, production. So now that the pull request has been created and the job has been, and the action has been built, I can go ahead and merge my uh, pull request. So once I merge my pull request, let's go back to the actions and see it running. So I do not have access to uh, deploy to production straight away on purpose. So now that my pull request is getting good, it's going to go and build it again. And then uh, we're going to wait for it to get into the uh, uh, deploy, uh, deploy to the staging environment. Now that Damien just approved it, it is going to get deployed to production. We don't need to wait for it now, but we can go, uh, move with the session. OK. Next one, now that we saw how we can deploy to staging, to different environment uh, on Azure, uh, an Azure application, another feature that has been shipped recently is the OIDC support. So um, it has been shipped now closer to a year, but we're adding more and more enhancement for that. But the idea here that uh, the OID support will allow you to create like a trust between your workflow and the cloud provider Azure, for example. So once this trust is created, once this is done, for your workflow can request a short-lived access token that will automatically expire once the workflow is complete. It does not require long-life secrets to be stored on GitHub uh, anymore. So this will allow you to manage uh, the access using the cloud provider authorization tools. Uh, this made a big difference, especially from a security perspective to lots of our enterprise customers. And we're also adding more enhancement to that. And these enhancements will include API support to make it easier for enterprises to programmatically automate the OIDC support. So this is a really big one from a security perspective. Uh, so we talked about lots of the recently shipped uh, features. Let's take a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about our roadmap and what's coming. First of all, when it comes to action, we know that it's incredible for any type of automation. And the product team is focused a lot on the CI CD scenarios as well. So we want to be able to build an industry leading runners experience. And that is for all of our enterprise customers. If they are using GitHub hosted runners or uh, the self hosted runners for both of them. Uh, this is a big picture of all of the things that are on our roadmap from a CI CD and automation perspective. 
lots of that will be available on our github.com uh, GitHub roadmap. So you'll be able to see it. And on top of that, we spoke about lots of these features. If you want to highlight one of them, for example, improve the linting support. And this will be part where GitHub will release an official actions extension for Visual Studio Code to make it to make building and managing workflow easier. So developers will be able to build actions workflow faster with the power of IntelliSense and VS Code. So features such as syntax highlighting and linting will be supplementing uh, supplemented by the code completion on expressions and input. So it will make it easier for experienced developers as well as for new developers when they start adopting uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, we did talk about lots of things today, but if you find any of that exciting and valuable and you would like to be, get more familiar and more hands-on with GitHub Actions, my quick piece of advice will be to step-by-step uh, step. take a course for example on the Microsoft learning uh, path there's a github actions course check the marketplace so you don't have to start by creating uh, actions from scratch try to start using the suggested workflows the simple one to get help you get started and use all the different templates that are uh, provided to you as well so you can explore all of all of these ones as well as when you're working with GitHub Actions, you can use some of the amazing features that we highlighted in this session to help you get up and running, like the visualization gr graph to monitor your workflow, the log, and all of that. Uh, I have lots of resources that I would like to share with you. Uh, so I've got this QR code that will take you to a GIST uh, file, and this one will have the list of all of the different uh, links. So link to our roadmap, link to the Microsoft Learning Path for GitHub Actions, uh, link to the larger runners, to the auto-scaling uh, runners, all of the different links that I would like uh, to share with you and the different resources. One more thing, last one before we go. Uh, we've got GitHub Universe as well coming soon in November. So there's lots of more and more exciting features that will be announced at GitHub Universe. So make sure uh, that you join virtually or in person. Thank you all for joining me today in learning more about GitHub Actions.